Hi. My name is Federico, and I'm working for Red Hat in the OVIRT storage uh, group. And I'm here to present you the current integration between OVIRT and OpenStack storage. So the presentation is mostly about uh, the integration between OVIRT and OpenStack, but I will give you a short introduction about OVIRT and OpenStack just to get you started on what they are. Uh, then I'll go over the present, current uh, integration, so what, what we have today with uh, the OVIRT and Glance integration, always in the storage side. Uh, importing and exporting Glance images and current limitations. And then I'll go over the, what we will have in the future um, with the Glance, future integration, uh, new things that we can add and improve there. Uh, Keystone authentication um, and how that is also involved with uh, storage somehow. Overt and Cinder integration in the coming future. So just to start, what is OVIRT? This is the definition that you can find around pretty much everywhere. OVIRT is the virtualization management application that manages hardware nodes, storage, and network resources uh, in your data center in order to deploy virtual machines. Right? Uh, it's open source, released under the terms of the Apache uh, license, and this is a quite old diagram that you can find, but nothing, like we have some new things going on, but uh, this is pretty much the idea. We have um, two different web interfaces, uh, the administration portal and the user portal to interact with it, uh, a REST API, then a JBoss application that is the engine that controls the, the data centers, and then on each node of the cluster, you have VDSM that takes care of controlling those nodes and uh, make them uh, uh, well, available and usable from the engine to manage basically everything from storages, uh, network, anything that the virtual machine would need to actually run. Um, what is OpenStack? Uh, well, it's a cloud computing project that provides an, uh, an infrastructure as a service and also controls large pools of compute, storage, and networking resources. Apache license uh, is governed by a foundation that was established in September 2012. Um, there might be some overlap in the two projects. Uh, they are tailored for different workloads. So today it makes sense to make them living together in the same uh, infrastructure, so that is why we need to integrate them. Uh, I won't go much further into the differences, but uh, because the time is really limited, so this is the idea. So uh, the present time, you need some interaction between the two. And um, as a, well, as we see, OpenStack can be can have three different areas of projects: uh, compute, networking, and storage. We will focus on storage, obviously, in the scope of this presentation. And more specifically, we'll look at Glens and how that can benefit uh, in the integration with OVIR, right? So what is Glens? Glens provides services for discovering, registering, and retrieving virtual machine images, right? Uh, it has a RESTful API for querying uh, VM images metadata and actually downloading that image. Uh, they can be, these images can be thought as uh, templates, if you're familiar with that concept in OVIRT. Um, can also be used as backup and has different backends eventually, like ranging from the simple file system <coughs> to Swift. Uh, it supports several disks formats uh, and containers formats, uh, disk formats as RAW, QCO, and ISO, and container formats as BEAR and OVF. <coughs> You're probably familiar with these if you already use also uh, OVIRT. Um, it supports 
image metadata. Uh, basically, these, some, these are some additional information that you can have on the images that are stored in Glens. Um, you can pretty much go over them yourself. The, the, uh, I'll just mention two of them because they're kind of important in the integration. Um, one is the size. The size has to be intended as the real size of the image of the file that is transferred, uploaded or downloaded from Glance. And the status, um, there's a special status that is queued and it is when you have the metadata that is read in Glance but the image is not there yet. Okay, so these are important for the integration. So um, the, we also have um, some uh, additional properties that are now uh, more standardized in version two about the, um, some additional information about the image as the architecture, uh, the hypervisor type and some other information. Um, we decided not to use these common properties to store over specific information uh, because we wanted to actually have a full integration with uh, OpenStack. So, uh, that information wouldn't have been consumable by, um, by OpenStack. So we are not storing any additional uh, properties in, in Glance for now. Um, so the interesting use cases for OBIRT that can be, um, that we wanted to integrate with are importing and exporting single images or templates from and to Glance, right, for the interoperability with OpenStack. Um, uh, we can be used for uh, backups of images uh, of VMs and um, basically also use it as uh, ISO uh, domain. Today, Overt has something specific that is called uh, ISO domains that are, um, that are used to store ISO images for the, for the, um, for the VMs, but uh, we can try to think uh, to leverage Glance also for that. Um, and then the final goal that is really ambitious is to import and export um, uh, full VMs and, and templates uh, supporting complete VM definition, multiple disks, and snapshots. Um, so for the initial phase, we just focused on the first um, point here, which is importing and exporting single images. And basically, um, that, um, that integration has been um, uh, implemented using something that came along uh, in over 3.3 um, that are called external providers. So in over 3.3 we introduced the concept of uh, external providers that are, um, well, services that we are able to understand and integrate with, right? And, uh, and basically both OpenStack Image, Glance, and Network, uh, and also Foreman has been, uh, like they have been integrated as um, external providers in Overt, right? So we have a new tab in the, uh, well, this is the web admin UI, and this is where you can add new external providers, and this is, this is how it looks like when you have Glance um, integration here. So the, the Glance uh, external provider, when you define it, uh, you have several fields that you have to fill in, uh, well, name description, the URL of the service, and the authentication, right? You can also test the, the connection at that point. Uh, this, is pre this pretty much gets you started with it. And uh, as soon as you add this external provider, um, Glance external provider, you will also find a new uh, storage domain in the storage tab. Um, that is exactly the Glance domain that you just added, and they are somewhat special. Uh, they basically uh, are unattached to a storage pool. Uh, up until now, we always had storage domains that were um, attached to a certain data center, right? Um, in this case, they're, they're not attached to any specific data center, and you can use them, in fact, to uh, import and export images between um, different data centers. Um, we, for some operation that we do 
uh, from the overt perspective, um, we needed to interface with um, uh, OpenStack services, but OpenStack provides at the moment um, only Python bindings for that and engine you know, over it is written in Java, so we also started contributing to OpenStack Java SDK as a mean of communication between the engine and the, um, the OpenStack services. Uh, we tried to stabilize it and add uh, the, sup the support for things that we needed. Um, so we can dive in one of the operations that we uh, are actually um, were interested in, uh, in, in the integration, basically, and the Glance image discovery, right? So we want to list the images that are provided by the Glance um, uh, service, and basically when you select the Glance um, storage domain in the UI, you will be prompted with, um, you will have a list of images that are available or that you can access on that Glance domain. Um, what happens behind the scene is, uh, is engine that is the overt engine that goes to Keystone to request the authentication, gets a token, and then goes to Glance, the Glance provider, external provider that you defined earlier to get the image list. There's some kind of caching involved here and then it's uh, di displayed in the UI um, as I showed you before. Um, so once you listed these images that are available in, uh, in the Glance service, you probably want to import uh, them. So what you do, you can select one of the image and uh, you can basically click the new button that is import and what happens is that the you will be prompted with um, um, a dialogue where you can select what data center uh, to use and in which domain you want the image to be imported to and what quota uh, to use for that image. And what happens behind the scene is engine again going to Keystone to request a token. Um, it goes and tries and discovers the image metadata to glance so that it can create uh, the internal representation of these images inside the engine. And after we have that re re representation of the, uh, of the image inside the engine, we go and issue the commands to be sent to create a new volume. So that's the container where we will store the image. And then we will issue a download image uh, that will start the data transfer from Glance to VDSM. So VDSM will go to Glance and download the image data into the volume that we just created. Um, so there's a special case uh, where basically what Glance didn't provide it was the, 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 the image virtual size. Um, so as I said before, basically what Glance gives you is the size of the image. Uh, this means that you are not able to discover in advance how large, uh, how big is the, is the image once you attach it to the VM, right? So uh, how large is the disk that the VM will see? Um, this is needed for um, the internal uh, representation that we keep of the disk inside the engine. So we also need this information. And at the moment, what we do is we go and download the initial part of the image and we discover the Qco header and we peek for the virtual size of the disk. Um, so Glance might provide uh, some additional information about the virtual size in the future, but this basically works also for regular HTTP. So this is uh, more compatible just with uh, also uh, other HTTP servers that are serving an image. And we will see later uh, that we can support also that. Um, how this imported uh, image looks in, in, uh, in Overt, uh, it's basically, uh, it can be found in the disks uh, tab and basically the metadata is, is maintained, most of it. 
uh, and then some other uh, information are forged uh, with defaults, like for example, the interface that is virt.io. And uh, basically at that point, you can create a VM on it or create a template. In 3.4, we automated the process so it can be imported right away as a template. Um, and so, so at this point, we can also look at the other, um, at the other uh, operation that is uh, uh, symmetrical to this, that is exporting disks to Glance. Um, it's pretty much the opposite. So now you go to the disk tab and you select um, uh, one of the disks and you can export them uh, to a Glance storage domain. Uh, you will be prompted, uh, prompted again with a dialog where you can select the Glance domain. Um, and that behind the scene will pretty much do the same. The engine will go to Keystone and well, it will queue the image, as I mentioned before. Basically, we prepare all the metadata about the image in Glance, but the real upload is done by VDSM. Uh, in fact, the engine sends an upload image uh, request to VDSM that then streams the data from the volume uh, that we have in our, our shared storage into Glance. Um, in Glance, this will look like as a regular image. Um, some of the metadata is maintained, like the name, for example. Um, and basically, this is based on the VDSM support for sharing images uh, that is, has been added specifically for Glance, but it can be leveraged for other um, methods of transfer of images. And one, so we have two new APIs. Uh, that we use um, in BDSM that are download image and upload image. And we can issue different uh, methods uh, for the uh, transfer. And one of these is HTTP. That is the one that is used for, uh, for glands, right? And we can also specify uh, additional headers uh, to it. Um, so, well, as I said, in this way, we gain support both for glands Right? and also for all the other HTTP servers. Um, there's another special case in, uh, that we have to cover, that is when we download an image that is QCO on a block domain. Um, so this is team provision, means that we create volumes that are, um, well, on block domains we use LVM, and we create volumes that are uh, not entirely large as the virtual size of the, uh, of the image. We just create them with chunks that then are extended uh, as, we, as the VM start using it. Uh, in fact, to implement basically team provisioning on block, um, block devices. Um, so what happens is that the volume that is created is just probably one gigabyte uh, in size. And what happens is that VDSM has to go to the HTTP server or Glance and download uh, and peek for the, in this case, the actual size of the file that will be transferred. And um, it will extend the volume to the correct size before downloading it. Um, in those, in all these mechanisms, we have Few limitations. Um, we are at the moment limited to uh, not being able to export images with multiple volumes. And this means that we cannot export disks that have snapshot or that are based or thin provisioned on a template. And this is because basically we want to export one, one image that is full contained uh, while uh, we are using external snapshot for volumes, right? And, and so it means that we, if we want to export these, uh, these images, we would have to collapse them. But uh, I have one slide about that later. Um, there is no live VM disk export. Obviously, the VM should be down. Um, but uploading templates is always possible. Um, there's no sparseness support on file domains for raw format. Uh, the images are always pre-allocated. 
uh, means that we are not punching holes in zeros, in series of zeros at the moment, so we download them. Um, obviously, compression would, uh, would help in this case. Um, and we cannot resume a partial download of the image. Uh, so we are moving now to the future. And uh, in fact, these are the ideas for the future improvements of GLANS. Uh, we can add a few simple operations like deleting uh, images, uh, chain online squash, that is what I was uh, speaking about, so uh, to support disks that have a snapshot, um, upload image compression to save bandwidth, uh, and also support sparseness probably. Um, uh, well, integrated upload and download via uh, web admin and user portal, so you can upload images or download images from your desktop, uh, and they will be streamed uh, into the volume. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, store ISO images in Glance and use them natively in um, Ovirt as ISO domains, basically, and import and export full VMs and templates. So um, just a few words about the squashing, uh, squashing and compression of, uh, of um, multiple volumes images that we have in uh, Ovirt. So as we see here, we have uh, an image that has two snapshots. And basically, the base volume can be either raw or QCO. It doesn't matter, but snapshots one and snapshot two are two QCO volumes. And in order to basically um, squash the image and see just the latest version, we have to compute the uh, map of the clusters that are scattered around these three uh, volumes. And there will be the support for this in QMU, in QMU image, right? It will give us a map of blocks um, that are scattered around in, in these volumes, and then we will read them sequentially, and after bufferizing them, we can compress them and stream them. So this is just one of the idea on how to deal with the problem without using some additional space where we um, basically store the, the image um, just for the upload. Um, other improvements in the area of Keystone are, well, in over 3, 4, uh, we introduced a large refactoring of authentication and directory services. Authentication gives you the, um, the, the identity of the user and the directory service provides a um, sets of information about the user. These have been de de decoupled, so now you can use them uh, mixing and matching. Basically, you can use the Kerberos authentication with the LDAP directory service if you want to, or any other combination. Um, and Keystone, uh, the, the Keystone authentication has been sketched as one of these uh, backends, but uh, at the moment we have patches up, uh, upstream, and if anyone wants to, to contribute or take them and finish them is welcome to. So, but this is the current status and um, we'll probably have it in the future somehow. Um, the interesting use cases for this integration is that we can consolidate the authentication in Keystone for both data centers, uh, Ovirt and OpenStack. Uh, we can also associate Keystone users and tenants to overt entities and well, basically give specific per permissions and roles to objects that we have in overt like um, uh, VMs or images or disks. And reuse the same Keystone identities when we are interfacing with, these, uh, with the services, with the OpenStack services. Um, so this is probably how it will look like. Um, Authentication goes to Keystone, and you will be granted the access, the access to the um, web portal in this case for this picture, but to the REST API or anything. And then supposedly later on, you can go to the services re reusing those uh, authentication credentials and the token, probably. Uh, another service that in the storage area that we want to integrate with is the 
uh, Cinder service that provides basically uh, an infrastructure for managing volumes um, since, well, since Folsom because previously it was part of, um, of the compute node of Nova, now since Folsom has been um, separated into a specific uh, project itself that is Cinder and um, volumes are persistent read-write block storage devices that um, most commonly are used through iSCSI, right? Uh, now we have some other that are slightly different, for example, Gluster FS that um, are attached as a shared, uh, as a shares, um, are mounted actually as shares uh, volumes. So, and um, they have a life cycle that is independent from the VM instances, so you can create VMs that are using these, uh, these volumes and destroy them and create other new instances that are using it, but they are decoupled, right? Um, supports a snapshot, and this snapshot can be used for new volumes, and backups are generally archived in, um, in Swift. Um, the use cases in over to well, we, we can think of, import, of importing and exporting images from Cinder, but probably the most interesting one is sharing Cinder volumes for, for the interoperability with OpenStack. And in that way, we, we will leverage the Cinder volume drivers that they have that, uh, for the support of storage appliances for IBM NetApp. Uh, hardware, Dell, EMC, and the, in this way gain also the storage of loading capabilities that are coming with the Cinder volumes. And we can also think to unify snapshot and backup strategies in your data center also gain uh, for both Overt and OpenStack probably. Um, one part of the integration would be to, uh, again, going to Keystone for the authentication and do some simple operation like listing, creating and deleting volumes in, in Cinder. And um, later on, uh, when we actually want to use them, uh, we will, um, after we created or, yeah, well, identify the volumes that, that, that we want to use with, uh, with some overt VM, we will issue, we will either set up the connection or create VM will embed some way of connecting to the real, well, to the storage that is provided by Cinder. So this is pretty much what uh, uh, we are planning as future integration with OpenStack. Uh, I, I want to mention that we also have a talk tomorrow about networking, integration between Ovirt and OpenStack in networking, so uh, that will complete the picture. Um, and uh, I have useful links for you in mailing list that if you're interested, and um, there's work in progress of having glanceover.org as a repository for images that you could start downloading yourself for your Ovirt uh, uh, instance, right? Uh, so basically, you we will have images of the most important distribution there and you will be able to, from, from your installation, to download these templates uh, using Glance. Any question? Ah, sorry. <laughs> uh, wait for the mic. Hello. Hi. How long do you think the integration with Cinder will take time? We are planning it for uh, uh, the uh, the Overt 4 release, seems to be. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much the time frame, the Overt 4 release. Um, there's some function in Cinder, for example, called Cinder Backup. Are you trying to go on to support such things? Uh, we have not specific details exactly of how much of that work. So basically, how much time do we have? Uh, not much, 10, okay. <coughs> so 
<coughs> basically the, 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 the problem in the integration with uh, uh, Cinder is that we have many flows of um, complex um, operation that we do on storage that are uh, specific to over like for example um, live snapshots or live storage migrations right? these are in the current implementation are really tailored to how the how the images are stored in the storage and how they look like in over right and all these flows might they don't map at all to Cinder. So an easy integration uh, with Cinder would be to leverage what we have already today that are direct LANs. So we already support direct LANs. Um, and we have some operations there that uh, we support. But that's the easiest integration. So you basically can use Cinder volumes as direct LANs. So that's the easiest one. For all the other complex flows, it will require time. Uh, Definitely. Thank you. Okay. Four dot zero. The release four dot zero. Uh, is it related to Red Hat Linux uh, seven, or does the schedules match, or <laughs> or is it not allowed to speak public about that? support we're planning to add it in uh, over 3.5 actually so as using an EL7 host rel 7 or CentOS 7 as the host is planned for over 3.5 for the engine itself to run probably will take a bit more time the interesting part is probably using it as a host but uh, can we expect that it's in the Red Hat way like it used to be, where you do a lot of backporting, like with the kernel or stuff like that, that you get some features from the 4.0 uh, release uh, backported to the actual uh, Red Hat package of Overt? Uh, we, usually it's, it's not an issue so much for Overt or Rev, which is the, the, the Red Hat version of it, because we usually rebase each minor version, so we don't have to do a lot of backports for features. Most of the backports are for stabilization, and we're doing a lot of them in upstream Overt as well. So we just have Overt 3.3.3 you know, uh, stabilization release for the current Overt release. So a lot of uh, backports are done both upstream and downstream. That's too far to say. I, I don't know the schedule. <laughs> Uh, I joined a bit late, but uh, I missed uh, the, the thing about the LDAP integration and all those things. But um, I've got a lot of customers which are still, uh, please don't beat me up, but which are still running yellow pages through NIS, which are on a plain Unix user backend. Without any LDAP integration, we got, I did some uh, POSIX ACLs on that to extend the, the possibilities of groupings and stuff like that. Is there any uh, integration plan for just simple uh, Unix user backends, which are a bit extended uh, regarding POSIX articles? You can use, uh, as Federico mentioned, there's uh, a lot of work on refactoring the authentication backend. You can write a plugin for anything now, basically. So. Right. Uh, oh, we can just mute it. <laughs> <laughs>